Alright, what's up everybody? Nobody. Somebody. That's mine. It's yours. We're gonna be here long enough for water break. We might be. We may need a water break. Hey Andy. Hey Gina. Hey Gina, how are you? Hey Mandy. Goodness, people were just dying to get on this. They're just hopping on here like flies. It's great. Your mama. There's my mama. There's <laughs> Jennifer. Mandy, tell Sawyer, happy Redhead Day. Today's Redhead Day? <laughs> Today's Redhead Day. Oh, wow. Don't tell Leah. I did. She was thrilled. All right. Hey, Corey. Good to see you guys. Hey, hey. All right. Well, we'll give everybody a minute to hop on. Um, hopefully, you've been outside this evening. I thought it was going to rain all night, and it turned out to be a beautiful night. So, we decided to do this outside. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Rusty. Good to see you, man. So, see you. there's Sue Fair. She's so fair. <laughs> She's very flirty. All right. Well, we don't have much to cover tonight, but I did want to give you an update on, um, Amber said what Amber asked. I didn't see it. Something about redheads. Oh, <laughs> You're not able to read. Happy redhead day, Amber. You, yeah. So if we miss a question, Joseph oh. or Adam or Jennifer will text Christy and she can, cause it's going by so fast. We can't. So, well, we don't have much to cover tonight, but we do have a few things. So we wanted to give you an update. Um, a little bit has changed since the last time we met, and, and so we wanted to make sure that you're aware of kind of where we were as a church and kind of what we were planning on doing. Um, but let me just start with prayer, and let me pray together, as, and we'll just ask the Lord to bless this time together. Uh, will you join me? Lord, I just thank you for your grace, and ask, Lord, that you would bless this time, God, as we just uh, talk about the state of Park Hill, where we're at, and um, kind of what the next steps look like for us during this very strange and um, uh, un just different kind of season. So Lord, we give this time to you, and we just ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, let me just share with you real quick. Uh, this should take just a few minutes. but uh, So we did put together, last time we met, I had mentioned that we were putting together a relaunch team. And since then, the re relaunch team has met. It's made up of the staff. Uh, I think four deacons um, and then several members of our congregation who are in the medical community. And we met on last Monday and they we discussed uh, what a re reopening, what a relaunch could look like. And they were in agreement that we uh, waiting until phase three uh, of the uh, White House's reopening America plan. Is it truck going by? Uh, two of them. The White House's reopening American plan was the was probably the best strategy, and so with that in mind, we're still operating off of that um, that idea. Is that once Arkansas gets to phase three? Now, that being said, if you've been following the news, you know that that has been slowed uh, over the last week, and so we thought we were on a pace to be at phase three by July or sorry June the seventh. As it stands right now, that is not the case. We are not going to be able to reach that by June the 7th. So, uh, but we're still planning on a full reopen uh, with obvious restrictions, uh, whatever the CDC guidelines are at that time for a phase three reopen. So, we're, so the relaunch team is still uh, looking at a phase three. Now, the reason for that uh, is because based on where we are as a church, uh, how God is using our online environment, the amount of senior adults and and um, parents with young children that we have, uh, we've just made the decision overall that it makes sense for us to remain in an online environment for the near future. Now, that being said, if we do move to phase two and that, that continues on for a considerable amount of time, uh, the relaunch team will continue to discuss possibly reopening before we get to phase three if it looks like it's going to take uh, just an extraordinary amount of time to get to that point. So we're just being cautious, but we're also open to, you know, if it does end up dragging on, then then we'll be open to whatever, um, you know, whatever the Lord would lead us to do with that. So when we do reopen, just a reminder that it will be Sunday worship services only. So it's kind of, it's really in some ways going to be a week-to-week -week, um, thing once we get to June. 
Um, so we're not looking at June the 7th anymore. Probably the earliest would be June the 14th. Um, and then it'll be sort of week to week uh, as we move forward from there. There'll be no Sunday school or child care. Um, and we will be kind of laying out what those guidelines will be when we do reopen. Um, so we'll make sure that those are very clear uh, the week or two weeks before we actually do reopen. Okay. We are looking at, and I've not talked to the relaunch team about this yet. The staff just discussed it today. So we'll run it by the relaunch team and see their thoughts on it. But we're looking at a possible evening outdoor service, um, like a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, uh, an opportunity to, to encourage safe fellowship and community. Obviously, we'll be following CDC guidelines for that, um, but we're still looking at the possibilities of that and what that could look like, all right? Um, so uh, it, that won't happen this week, but maybe in the next couple weeks, we'll be looking at a, a, a way for us to be able to do that, because I know community is really important right now to be able to get together. So right now in the feed, uh, I think Jennifer is going to be dropping a short survey just to kind of gather some of your thoughts about the reopening. Uh, I think there's just three questions on there. It should take you just two minutes, uh, if you don't mind, to open that link and then just let us know what you're thinking. Um, the link is being posted now in the comments and also has been emailed to your church email, so you can check that out there if you want to. So just real quick survey, and we would just love to know kind of we did one of these, I think, two weeks ago. Is that when we had the State of the Church? And so, there it is. And so, uh, we're just going to see where everybody's at now. I uh, realize that uh, over the last two weeks, some things may have changed and your, your opinions may have changed. So, just wanted to do a follow-up. So, uh, I do want to address uh, one thing. I know in Arkadelphia, other churches... going to answer Lindsay's question. What's it? Good timing, Lindsay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, other churches are beginning to reopen. And so, as that happens... We recognize as a staff and as a relaunch team and the deacons that every church has their reasons for opening, uh, not opening, delaying, and we respect those churches. I love those men, those pastors, those leaders, uh, you know, and I, I believe that they're making the right decision for their congregation. But that being said, we, we obviously want to make the right decision for our congregation, where we are, who we are as a church. Um, and so we're going to be a little more cautious with that. Uh, and all the respect to those churches that are that are already opening certainly don't want to um, to look down on that decision. I think they made the right decision for them. So um, while we're considering taking counsel from a lot of different areas, uh, obviously we're looking to our medical professionals within our church as well as church leadership, and we're trying to make a decision based on not only uh, spiritual health but also physical health of our congregation and making sure that we're uh, caring for everyone on all those levels. And so, um, so for at least for the time being, we're going to continue with our online worship. And then once we do reopen, uh, as we've said before, we'll continue with an online uh, worship environment. One of the reasons that, uh, and it's not the primary reason, but one reason that we were delaying is that uh, in order for us to produce an online worship service that is high enough quality, um, that those who cannot attend in person would be able to receive a, a great benefit from it. Uh, we need to upgrade a few things and think about how we want to do that. Um, and so we're in the process of trying to get all that together as we speak. So, because we don't want to have, you know, a great in-person service and then an online service that uh, just isn't up to snuff because we haven't had the chance to put together uh, like that, up to snuff. Is that inappropriate? I don't know. Can we say snuff? Comment in the in the comments below. Let me know if you do snuff. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so, but we'll continue with the online service. So, we do want to strongly encourage life groups and small groups to meet uh, outdoors as soon as possible. I know, um, uh, I believe Larry's Sunday school class is meeting uh, Sunday night um, at the church. They're going to meet down at, under the awning. Um, and then I think... Um, I know the Bab Sunday School class, I think, is looking to meet snuff. <laughs> People are commenting about whether or not they use snuff. No, they're making fun of you. Oh, they're making fun of me. Okay. Um, so I do want to encourage our life groups and small groups to go ahead and meet together. Um, so with that being said, are there any questions about a reopening plan at this point? Anything that we can clarify for you? Buddy says yes, you can say that. Okay, good. You just raise your hand, and Christy will call on you if you have a question. 
I don't even know what that saying means. I'm going to have to Google it now. Up to snuff? I mean, I know what it means, but like, what does that say for? That's I need more question. details. I don't know. I don't know. All right, doesn't look like there's any questions. So I guess that means we nailed that. Yeah. Good job. Uh, so let's talk about children and youth real quick, because um, there is one change there. So our youth are planning to have uh, one in-person meeting a month, beginning next Wednesday, June the 3rd. So um, not tomorrow, but June the 3rd, they will uh, have an in-person meeting. Oh, Rusty. What? Rusty said, does Christy need a red chair? No. Oh. Wow. I'm in my big orange chair. Oh, a hog chair. Okay. Um. Before you go to that, hold on. There's a question about, the, will we have multiple service times? Yeah, uh, so that it, that does, that'll depend on how many of our church members actually say that they are, um, okay, so there's some questions coming in. Just answer that one. I'll okay, um, so that'll depend on how many are actually planning on attending. I know that, you know, if we're, right now churches around Arkadelphia, they're having about 10% um, or so, 10, 15% attendance based on their normal attendance. If that's the case and we're at 10 or 15%, we can easily house that within one service. Uh, if we're closer to 50 or 100%, um, whenever we finally do get back, then we will, um, uh, then we'll obviously look at having multiple services. Okay. So right, I guess that just goes to, the, the point is if, when you fill out the survey, let us know and then that'll give us a chance to kind of get a better sense of who will be coming back. What were the other questions? Um, what's your thoughts on congregational singing? Yeah, so I love congregational singing. I think it's the best. Um, so one of the reasons that we we want to be really careful is that part of part of church, part of worship, is the singing of praise to the Lord, and uh, to to meet as a body and not be able to sing. Um, I think um, I think it's just better served if we're in a place where we can sing. So the online environment, I think, is is where we want to go. Um, so one of the reasons that we wanted to wait till phase three is just so that we can be able to, um, have as little restrictions as possible on our times of worship, um, so that it's not uh, a huge inconvenience for you and we can begin to integrate some sense of child care and care for our senior adults as well. Um, that being said, uh, the relaunch team is working on kind of devising a strategy so that we would be able to sing in the building. Um, so we'd spread the chairs out enough so that singing could take place and there wouldn't be a huge problem. One of the ideas that they're having right now, or that one idea that they're tossing around, is actually everyone bringing their own chair uh, into the worship area, so bringing like a lawn chair into the sanctuary um, so that uh, we don't have the issue of, um, you know, droplets, mouth droplets, spittle, I don't know, getting on things. And um, spread that way. So that's that's one of the things our, that we're trying. Our sanctuary chairs are just they're the cloth and not easily disinfected. Like and we would it would take some major Lysol spray to cover all those chairs and a lot of and, time. And a lot of time. And Lysol spray is not easily accessible right now. So um, we just it, like he said, it's just being tossed around. That bring in your own chair and then you take your chair with you. And so that would um, that would help. With, with the um, cloth chair situation. And we'll make sure to bring my big orange one. No doubt. Um, Paula says, hard to sing with the mask on. It will That's sound true. very interesting very if we muffled. have to sing with mask on. I would encourage everyone just to brush your teeth before you come. <laughs> yeah, so uh, again, uh, once we get to phase three, as far as the way that I read it, if, if that is what we end up going with, uh, you're not required to wear a mask at that point, um, but that we will be practicing social distancing. Um, but it changes every day. It changes every day. And <laughs> from what I understand, and you guys who are in the medical field, correct me if I'm wrong, but as long as you're practicing healthy social distancing, you don't have to wear a mask, especially if we're bringing in our own chairs. Uh, the, re the mask, as, as I understand it, is used when you can't social distance or you're going to be in areas where it, it could be easily transferred. So, Christy may or may not disagree. I think they're encouraging to wear masks most of the time. So. Because I might can social distance, but you might not social think my, your social distancing is the same as my social distancing, and you might get in my space. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I often get in her space. <laughs> so. So anyway, that's what the relaunch team is for. 
Um, so we'll we'll work out all those details. What other questions popped up? Lindsay says purchase launchers. Yep. I think that's it. Okay, and you can go to you can go to youth now. Okay, I thought I saw something else. Oh, like Micah hit, said something. He said it wasn't a question. It said thank you, but then it was gone. So um, I'll have to go back and read it. But okay. Micah said thanks. Oh, good. I don't know what all it said. Great. <laughs> Well, if we need to go back to, to get some compliments, we will. Yeah, we'll have we'll, that at the end. We'll do compliments. So, you know what? You, we can do compliments <laughs> later. All right, so our youth. Um, so next Wednesday night, June the 3rd, they're going to be meeting in person. They're going to try to do this once a month. Um, and so, and the relaunch team knows about this, and they're, they put their stamp on it. So the idea is that the youth will meet at the church outside. They're going to bring their own lawn chair or stay in their car. Everyone's going to be uh, asked to wear a mask. Um, the chairs and cars will be spaced out at least six feet apart. And whenever they step onto the campus, they are going to uh, be put into uh, their DG groups, which will be all socially distance, distance. Uh, but they'll, be, they'll stay in their DG groups. So they'll have a large group service, socially distanced, um, and then they'll, they'll already be in their DG groups. Now, we do have several adults that are going to be monitoring um, the social distancing. It's the DG leaders. The DG leaders who are there. Um, and so any parents that want to come, they're more than welcome to come be a part of that as well. And if you don't feel comfortable having your child there, you don't feel like it's um, you know, where you want them to be, uh, we are looking at some ways for that uh, service also to be uh, online as well, at least part of it. So, um, oh, and we would strongly encourage you to use the restroom before you arrive. Now, obviously, if there's an emergency, you will be able to use the restroom in the building, uh, and proper sanitization will happen before and after. But if you can um, go before, that would be great. And the service itself will last approximately or exactly one hour, so just be prepared for that. Uh, all other youth activities will continue online for the time being, so just be aware of that. And our children activities are going to continue online for the foreseeable future. Children are just um, so much more difficult to socially distance and to practice um, good hygiene with, um, you know, because they're literally into everything. So, uh, so we're going to stay online for the children for the foreseeable future until something changes. All right. So any questions about the youth service? So. Uh, as you're kind of maybe typing in some questions or some thoughts. So when we had the senior recognition, um, that was great. It was great to see everybody. One of the things that we didn't do a great job of is maintaining uh, our space in our cars and social distancing. Uh, we want to make sure that that is a huge priority for this youth service. And the reality is that if we don't do it well, we're just not going to be able to do it. And I know that sounds harsh. Um, but we want to make sure that we maintain healthy uh, practices that are not only safe and healthy for our congregation, but safe and healthy for individuals who they may come in contact with. And also, we want to have good standing uh, in our community. We want to be perceived as a church that cares about its community. So, um, so uh, I would just say to our youth and to our youth parents, I know, you know for some of you this may not be a big deal, um, but if it's something that we can't, uh, abide by, then we won't be able to do it. And I know it's something that all of us would love for you to be able to do. So, um, so that being said, all right, any questions pop up? Sarah said masks are the new cool fad. They are up to snuff. That masks are up to snuff. <laughs> oh dear. I do believe. <laughs> Wore my mask today. The little, dog just sneezed. He's yes. a little bit difficult. Yeah. A little bit difficult to breathe. So, <laughs> All right, any other questions about youth or children activities before we move on to the financial state and then a couple of announcements and then we'll be done. Seeing anything? All right, so let's talk about the financial state of the church real fast. So I just want to take a second and just thank everybody for your continuing to give um, through mail or online. Uh, so many of you have been so generous, and for some, you've, you've been above and beyond generous. You've not only given what you normally would, but you've given above and beyond to help keep the church moving forward, and we are just so very thankful for you, and thankful for all of you that have given during this time. I know, um, you know, 
for all of us, this is an uncertain time. And in times of uncertainty, it is our natural instinct to kind of stockpile and to hang on to. But for those of you who are willingly letting go of resources so the church can continue to do its ministry, uh, we are so very thankful. And as a staff, we just want to say thank you uh, and as the leadership of the church. So uh, with that being said, I know within our congregation, there are some that have had hours cut. They've had pay cut. They may have even lost their job for a season. And we certainly want to be sensitive to that. And um, we just want to let you know, first of all, that during seasons like that, we're, we're certainly not expecting you to, you know, to give. We're, we, we want to come alongside you and be of help. So if there's any way that we can help you, uh, please let us know. We, we have individuals in our church and we have um, a budget that we would love to be able to help church members that are maybe struggling in some different ways during this season. These are unprecedented times, and so if we can help in any way we can, please let us know. So let me give you a few numbers right now. And uh, so right now we are about $24,000 behind budgeted receipts for the current year. That's not behind spending. We've pretty much put a hold on spending other than necessities, and right now we're thinking about you know, what is a necessity moving forward, but we're, but for our budgeted receipts. Now, um, that being said, there are several events during the summer that are not going to be billed uh, this year because we've had to cancel them. So while that, that does sound bad uh, and 24,000 isn't great, um, you know, we're, we're still moving forward. And plus, uh, we do have the Pete's Plus money um, providing an emergency cushion if we need it. I'm fixing the fat over a bone. There you go. go get your bone. Crazy thing. Did he already eat it? Yeah. Anyway, um, so if possible, obviously, we would love to make our annual budget um, with giving. So if you haven't had a chance to give already, you can do that online. You can download the Church Center app. Uh, and I believe, uh, Joseph, there's a video I think he might be able to put in the comments that will show you how to do that if you can find it. Um, it's really easy. It's super easy, yep. So, um, you get attacked by the dogs. Oh, you're too, you're too long-winded. Yeah, sorry. I almost speed it up. <laughs> we only well, they went through the bone. All right, so if you're looking for ways to give above and beyond, um, then you should be able to, uh, we would encourage you to give toward our benevolence fund. So if you want to give toward ministry above just kind of the general budget, um, there are individuals within our congregation that, that could use some help, and um, so we would love to be able to pass along needs to them, as well as individuals in our community. Uh, and the next thing I just want to reiterate, as I said before, if you have any need, uh, please let us know. Uh, I know right now that the temptation is to act like there's nothing happening and you're fine, but if you've lost wages or hours or you're just in a pickle, um, man, let us know. We want to help. We really do. And there are loving people in the congregation that would love to help you. And we'll keep it as anonymous as we have to. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that you get the help that you need. So please let us know um, so that we can, we can help. All right, uh, any questions about the finances, you can put those in the comments and then we'll come back to them. A few announcements that you need to be aware of. Uh, so the church office hours. Um, so we are not opening up to the community yet, but for church members who need to bring something by the office or need, need something, the church office hours beginning next week will be Monday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 12 so Jennifer will be in the office from 9 to 12 on Monday, ne beginning next Monday and Wednesday for those three hours. So if you need to drop uh, a check by or you need to pick up, um, you know, your your Sunday school material or, or whatever, the, that'll be the time that we know that someone from the church will be there. We do ask that you call the church and let us know when you arrive so, so that we can open the door for you because we're, we're still trying not to take individuals from the community into the building just for the sake of... Uh, social distancing. Um, we'll also be glad to meet you outside the office uh, and pick up or drop off anything you need. If you do need to come into the building, we ask that you wear a mask, uh, wear a mask, and feel free to drop off tie checks or pick up Sunday school materials or any other supplies during this time. So, yeah. So we do ask that you wear a mask if you have to come by. Okay. All right. Any questions come up? You saw. Okay. Any really witty comments that? And make us all smile. Oh, those are all for me. Oh. <laughs> uh, two, so. two promo announcements that I want you to want you to know about, and then and this is it. Uh, tomorrow morning at noon, uh, or tomorrow at noon, we're having our coffee with Craig, which is our Facebook online uh, Bible teaching time, 
And we're going to be asking the question, do I have to go to church to be a Christian? And looking at the spiritual discipline. Oh, not, because we haven't been going to church. Ah, but have we? <laughs> um, yes. That's the question. And so we'll be looking at the spiritual discipline of corporate gathering and worship and asking, is it required to be a follower of Jesus? What does that look like? So tomorrow at noon, uh, you can come be a part of that just here on the Facebook Live channel. We'll go live and you jump on. Um, the other thing is Sunday, we're continuing our study, uh, uh, Hurt by the Church. And so I want to ask you to do something for me. I've t my wife told me that I was not allowed to shave my head or anything like that because we're supposed to have family pictures pretty soon. But here's the deal. Uh, Hurt by the Church is meant to, uh, it's meant to be an encouragement to all of us, but it's also meant to speak to those who maybe uh, drifted outside of the body who are, um, you know, on the fringes, who, who have been hurt uh, in different ways by someone within a church body. And so uh, I would encourage you, though, uh, Jennifer will be posting um, some stuff on our social media feed, uh, the church social media feed, to share that with your community. Let, just let people know that you're excited about it. Let people know that uh, this is something that could be a benefit to them. Because uh, for someone who has been hurt by the church, it could be really an encouraging thing for them to hear that people within the church care about them, uh, love them and know and want to help them work through it. So, uh, also on Sunday morning, if you share that feed, just throw something in the comments saying or in your in your feed saying, "Hey, love for you to be a part of this." Uh, that would be great. So that's this Sunday. All right, I think that's it as far as I've got. Are there any other announcements or? Oh, oh. Tails, but some take stop! Out of the Corey said, "Shave Christie's head." No thanks. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. Right. Um, Sarah made you a hashtag up to snuff. Hashtag up to snuff. <laughs> Park Hill, hashtag up to snuff. I love it. I no. love it. No, no, no. All right. Well, if there's not any questions or any other fi final comments, we will um, we'll sign off for tonight. But that's <laughs> fair. All right. Well, uh, feel free to send any messages to the Park Hill Facebook page or email us and let us know, and we'll get back with you if there's a question that, that couldn't be answered here online. Um, the relaunch team is meeting on Thursday to kind of reevaluate the next stage, and so probably this time next week we might be able to have uh, another update for you that will give you a better sense of where we're at and where we're going. Can we drop the survey link again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jennifer or Joseph, can you drop the survey link one more time? Um, I think people missed it. David said thanks. Thank you, David. Glad you're feeling better. Mm -hmm. There it is. There's the link. And now it is pinned to the bottom. So, All right. So, yeah, if you What's don't mind. So you just say, you just say I just thanks say it. it just happened. Link. Pin it. <laughs> so uh, if you can fill out that form, that would be great. And otherwise, we will talk to you soon. God bless, and um, we'll be praying for it. Let me pray for us as we dismiss. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, we just give this time to you. We pray, Lord, um, for our city. We pray for our county and our state and the leaders in it. Lord, we pray for our country and even our world. God, this is not something that's just affecting our city, but it, it's touching every region and every area of the world. So, Lord, we just ask for your grace to know how to move forward. We, we thank you for uh, a congregation. I thank you for a congregation that is sympathetic and is um, so easy to work with and so willing to, to be open um, to how you might lead. And so, Lord, we just pray for your grace. I pray for those who are ill uh, in our county. And, Lord, we pray for our congregation, Lord, that you protect them from this virus. Lord, we love you, and we just ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Love you guys. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at noon. And we'll talk to you soon.